left you hanging after reading chapter two, and I know that you are wondering what happens next with the two brothers, Derek and Sam. Okay, so let's get started without further ado. Chapter three is called The Coin. Do you remember why it might be called The Coin? What might have happened? Hmm. Remember, the author usually picks the title of the chapter for a reason. So maybe you can try and figure that out while you listen to the chapter. All right, chapter three, The Coin. After the chase through the woods, Derek and Sam stayed indoors for a while. Not that they were scared, of course, they just wanted to take a break. Okay, admitted Sam that first night in bed after the lights had gone out, maybe he was a little scared. When he closed his eyes in the dark, he could still feel himself running home through a blur of leaves and branches and the fierce growl chasing them. I can't even imagine that. I'd be having nightmares too, probably. Derek had tried to describe what had happened to their dad, but it hadn't come out right. To their dad, the story sounded like they'd simply played a game of tag with some friends in the woods. Why don't you just stay away from that part of the woods for a while? Their dad had counseled. That seemed like a good idea. After breakfast, Sam went to his room and pulled the coin he'd found in the creek from his desk drawer. He held it under the light. It was dark colored, but clean from the water. The front looked like a regular penny. Abraham Lincoln's picture was in the middle. Honest Abe, he'd heard him called. He could just barely make out the words along the top ledge. In God we trust. He remembered seeing that on a lot of coins, so it didn't seem unusual. To the left of Honest Abe was the word liberty. He'd heard that word in the Pledge of Allegiance each morning at school, but wasn't really sure what it meant, he'd asked Derek. The last thing he noticed on the front of the coin was a date, 1931. That seemed pretty old, maybe even older than Dad. He turned the coin over to the part he'd seen in the woods. One cent was written across the middle of the coin, and underneath in smaller letters it said, United States of America. Some odd-looking markings ran along the sides, and at the top were some tiny letters that he couldn't make sense of. Whatever it was, this coin was different from anything he'd seen before. He shook a newer penny out of his piggy bank and and he inspected it. That's kind of a smart thing to do, to compare it to another penny. The back had a picture of a building. Sam recognized it as the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. They'd visited it on a stop during one of their house hunting trips to Virginia that spring. They made That made sense since Abraham Lincoln was on the front. Sam went back to those words that he couldn't understand. He noticed it was on the newer penny as well. He tried to read what they said, but the letters were small and worn. E, Flory, Bus, uh, Num. I wonder what that means, he said aloud. What what means? asked Derek from the doorway. What are you looking at? Sam jumped Derek's voice. He wasn't expecting him. He was always sneaking up and surprising him. I'm trying to read the letters on this old coin. I don't understand these strange letters. He held it out to his brother. It's on this new penny, too. It looks like a different language, said Derek, comparing both coins. Let's ask Dad. He might know. Dad, we need your help, called Derek as they burst into his office downstairs next to the living room. He was unpacking boxes and filling the shelves behind his desk with books. We have this old coin and can't read what it says, added Sam. It looks like Chinese or something. Chinese? Well, that seems unlikely. Their dad set down a pile of books. Let's see what you have there. Sam Sam handed him the old and new coins. I think these are both pennies, but this one is really old. Look, it says it's from 1931. Is that when you were born? 1931? Their dad laughed and made a face like he was insulted. No, Sam, I'm not that old. Thank you very much. 1931 is 10 years before Grandpa was born. You'll have to ask him if that's old or not and see what he says. He nodded at the coins. Now, where were those words you couldn't read? Right here. Sam flipped the coin over and pointed at the unusual letters. It says a power bus oven or something crazy like that, said Derek. Their dad squinted at the coin. I may not have been born in 1931, but that is some tiny print. Just a second. He reached into another box on the floor 
and pulled out a magnifying glass. He switched on the desk lamp and held the coin under the round lens. That's much better. Well, what does it say? Asked Derek. I don't know how good I'm going to pronounce this, but I'll try my best. E pluribus unum. That's Latin, boys. It means out of many, one. Out of many, one, repeated Sam. What in the world does that mean? Why would they put that on a coin? Derek held up his finger and grinned. Maybe it means that many poor coins should come to one person. Like me, then I'd be rich. Their dad laughed. I don't think so, son. It has to do with our country being made of different parts, yet still all the same nation. I'm sure you'll learn about it in history class soon. He looked at the coin, but look here. I see that it is a wheat penny. Wheat penny, asked Sam. What's a wheat penny? It is made, or is it made of wheat? Derek held out his hand. Here, let me eat it. I'm hungry. It's a bit hard to see on this one because it's so old, answered their dad. But if you look carefully under my magnifying glass, you can see two stalks of wheat along the sides of the coin. That's where it gets its name. I'll bet we can find some more pictures online. Their dad did a quick search for Wheat Penny on his laptop. The screen filled with images of coins that looked much shinier than the one that Sam had found. Their dad clicked on one picture and they could easily see two stalks of wheat on each side of the coin. I'll show you the illustration. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see that. Kind of see it, right? A wheat penny, said Sam. Pretty cool. How much is it worth? Asked Derek. Five million dollars? Their dad chuckled. Probably not, but let's see. He clicked on a link to coin values and scrolled down until he came to the year 1931. If this was in perfect, or what's called mint, condition, it could be worth up to five dollars. He glanced back at the boys. Do you think yours is in perfect shape like the ones on the computer? What do you think? Maybe not if they found it in the little creek, right? No, this one's pretty old and worn, moaned Derek. How much is that worth? Well, said their dad, it looks like about 35 cents, which isn't so bad when you consider it used to be worth only one cent. And look here, it says there have been several kinds of pennies over the years. Wheat pennies were minted, which means made, between 1909 and 1956. After that, they changed to the Lincoln penny, like we have today. It has the Lincoln Memorial Building on the back. Their dad nodded. That's very, or that's right. Very good, Sam. What came after the wheat penny, Dad? Asked Derek. Let's see. Their dad scrolled lower on the screen. Before the wheat penny was the Indian head sent. Those were made from 1859 to 1909. Does that one have an Indian on the front? Asked Derek. Actually, said their dad reading further, it says here that the coin doesn't actually have a picture of an Indian or what we call a Native American, but rather a picture of Lady Liberty wearing a feather headdress. Sam raised his eyebrows. Lady Liberty, who in the world is that? Ben Franklin's girlfriend? This is getting confusing. Are they valuable? Asked Derek. Not all of them, answered their dad. Depends on the year and their condition. Some can be worth just a couple dollars, but here, look at this one. The 1877 Indian head cent is one of the rarest coins and can be worth up to $5,000. Wow, Sam shouted, that's a lot of money. Do you have any Indian head cents? Their dad shook his head, not that I know of. I'd guess only coin collectors and museums would have a coin like that. The office phone rang and their dad looked at the number. I have to answer this, boys. We can talk more about this later. Sam picked up the coins and followed Derek into the hallway. Those pennies are cool. I wonder why a wheat penny was out there in the woods. Do you think there's any more? Derek grinned. I don't know, but I want an Indian head scent. We'd be rich. We should go look for more. Yeah, Sam answered hesitantly. But it was over by that boulder, and I don't want to run into those kids again. Or a bear. I've been thinking about that. It couldn't have been a bear. Why would those kids have been playing so close to a bear? That's a good question, actually. I was kind of wondering the same thing. Were you? I don't 
know why, answered Sam, but they yelled, bear. I heard them say it, and there was definitely an animal chasing us. I'm not going back. We'll see, said Derek as the doorbell rang. The boys looked through the glass through the glass to the next uh, through the glass next to the front door, sorry, and saw their neighbor standing outside. Derek opened the door. Hello, Mr. Haskins. Hi, boys, Mr. Haskins answered in a crusty old voice. I've got some of your mail. The post office put it in my box by mistake. He pulled a couple of envelopes from his jacket pocket. It was the middle of summer. But old people seemed always dressed like it was winter. Were you born in 1931? Sam blurted out before he could think better of it. Mr. Haskins was old. Maybe he knew about the coins. 1931? Mr. Haskins cackled. No, I was born in 1935, right in that house. He gestured over his shoulder at his house, which seemed even older than theirs. They didn't need fancy hospitals like you kids are born in. Come to think of it, my older brother, Harold Haskins, was born in 1931, but he died when he was only eight. Sam suddenly wished that he'd stayed quiet. The old man was being kind of weird. Mr. Haskins leaned closer, his voice lowering. Died right there in those woods behind your house, my brother did. He fell in a hole. He paused a moment like he was going to say more about the holes, but he didn't. He looked Sam straight in the eye. How old are you, son? Sam gulped and felt a shiver down his spine. Eight, he whispered. The penny dropped from his hand and rolled down against Mr. Haskins' boot. Hey, you dropped something. The old man's bones creaked as he bent down and picked up the coin. What have we got here? Sam glanced over his shoulder, but their dad was still on the phone, gesturing with his hands and looking down at some papers. Mr. Haskins held the coin up. Well, I'll be. Can you imagine him looking at it? I haven't seen one of these for a while. You got yourself a wheat penny. Where'd you find that, boy? In the woods. Sam muttered and looked down at his feet. His shoelace was untied. He wondered if Mr. Haskins would notice, if he wandered off to tie it and didn't come back. He was sorry he'd brought up the 1931 in the first place. We found it in the creek yesterday, said Derek. Must have been 30 years since I held one of these. Mr. Haskins was still staring at the old coin. I wonder if this came from the... He paused. And glanced briefly over at the trees. Nah, couldn't have been. Came from what? Asked Sam, suddenly more interested in Mr. Haskins than his shoe. Well, back when I was a teenager... There was a big excitement around these parts. Someone broke into the Virginian Museum and stole a collection of rare coins. It was all over the newspapers. The coppers interviewed a bunch of people, including the man that lived in this house of yours. Davis was his name, Richard Davis, odd fella. Seemed like he worked at a security as a security guard at the museum, and they suspected that he might be involved. He'd been in prison or something like that. But they never could prove that he took the coins, and eventually the police gave up. Most folks forget about it, forgot about it, and got on with their normal business. What happened to the coins? asked Derek. Mr. Haskins shrugged. Never found them. Oh, every once in a while, some Yahoo would haul in a bag of old coins claiming they'd found the stolen collection, but they weren't from the museum. Hello, Jonas. The boys jumped and turned to see their dad standing behind them. Oh, hi, Bill. Brought some of your mail that the doggone postman delivered to me by mistake. Lived here over 80 years, and they still can't give me the right mail. I tell you what, I just keep giving your boys. I'm just giving them some local history lessons. Mr. Haskins turned to leave, but then peered back at Sam. Good luck with your wheat penny, son. You stay out of trouble now. He gave a creepy smile and waved his hand towards the trees. Watch out for them holes. Sam gulped and walked, watched him slowly walk away. That's the end of the chapter. Okay, so we have a new, two new characters. Dad, well, he's kind of been in the story a little bit before, but Mr. Haskins, the neighbor. I wonder what kind of role he's going to play in this story. What do you think? Seems like he knows a little bit. He grew up right there. Maybe he understands more about the creek and can help them on their new adventures in their new house. Mm. 
I don't know, but it's getting good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs>